Hey friends, thanks so much for joining on this bonus video. So this is going to be a little bit of a different format. This video isn't about offering tips, tricks and strategies about policing. It isn't a gear review. It's simply a video of encouragement. I'm going to share a small portion of my story and I hope that that lifts you up. So don't go anywhere. It's coming right now. Shall we begin? Hey friends, thanks for sticking around. Listen, if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe, smash the like button or bell button, but just want to introduce myself, Steve Watkins. It took me five years to become a cop and I endeavor to post videos like this as a way of encouragement and yeah, tips and tricks and strategies to help those along the way. And then those of us who are members of an organization and we've kind of realized our dream of becoming a police officer, my hope is to inspire those to keep going, to keep pressing on. So I hold in my hand my badge five years it took to get this thing. Five years. So here's a quick snippet of my story. I remember applying to the RCMP back in 2009 and back then it was the old paper. You had to fill in the little bubbles, you know, with a little pencil and then you had to leave the testing, uh, testing area and basically you had to wait. I think I waited about three and a half months to get my results. So the results came. I was so excited. I opened up the envelope and I remember it saying I passed. Congratulations. That wonderful word. Congratulations. I said, please go ahead and submit the, the other forms that you had to submit. And if you've done any of that, you know that it's, a, it's an encyclopedia of, of forms. So I remember filling those out, sending it all away. I was on cloud nine, as you can imagine. And because this is snail mail back in the 40s, okay, well, not quite, but 10 years ago, uh, snail mail took a long time to get to and from. So I remember getting an envelope after I'd submitted all of my stuff. I remember getting a small envelope in the mail and it basically said, Thank you, but you have been placed on a list. The initial ranked list. So basically what they were saying is, sorry, uh, we got your stuff, but sorry, you're not gonna proceed right now. And it went on to say that feel free to, to rewrite the test a year from the original testing date to, uh, to better your score and to be placed higher on this initial ranked list, the IRL. You can imagine, I was crushed. Because in my mind, it was like, I'm going on to the next stage. As the initial congratulations letter said, I'm going on to the next stage. I was so excited. And then when I get this little envelope and it said, thanks, but you've been placed on the IRL, you can rewrite in a year. Man, I was devastated. I was, I was angry. I was, I was even angry at myself for not doing better. Now, listen, I did pretty well. But back in 2009, the economy was tanked. And there was really no police forces that were doing much hiring. I think the RCMP were hiring about 300, uh, 300 people in a year. And you can imagine the onslaught of applicants, 300 is not very much. To give you an example, for the last year or so, and for the next year or two coming up, I mean, they're looking at numbers of 1,000, 12, 1,400 people that they want to hire just to keep with the, the staffing demands. So I was crushed. And I got this letter and I was just, man, I'm so mad. And I got over myself. That's a that's a tip kids, get over yourself. I got over myself and when the year came, I rewrote the test and it was still a pencil and paper. I wrote it, I sent it off, I left and it wasn't until about, I don't know, two and a half, three months later, I got the same initial ranked letter. It said, congratulations, you passed. However, you're placed on this list. And I thought, man, I, I got a better score. I'm not, I'm not failing anything. There's no weird stuff in my, in my past. There's no decisions that I've made that is kind of preventing me from moving forward. But the RCMP was, was in my heart and I said, man, I gotta, I gotta do this. So once again, kids, I got over myself, got over my powerful pity party. So I rewrote the test one more time. And I remember again, two, three months later, getting the results. It said, congratulations, you've passed, but you've been placed on the IRL. And by that point, I was scoring around uh, mid 80s to high 80s percentage on, on this aptitude test. And I thought, man, that's all I got. I am not smarter than that, that's it. If my mid to late 80s isn't good enough, then I guess it's just not going to work. And I kind of left it alone. And I thought, you know what? We'll see when the year comes. We, we will see. Now, this is, I guess, going into 2012 now. Um, and I thought, well, well, we'll see what comes of it. And uh, I kind of put it off in my mind. And that's, that's a key element. Sometimes we have to put, put it in its place. 
Do you know what I'm saying? We've got to say, maybe policing just isn't going to work. And we've got to come to rest with that. It, as hard as I worked, I mean, I was volunteering. I was auxiliary with Toronto Police Service. Uh, I was uh, giving to my community. I was spending a lot of hours uh, volunteering in soup kitchens. I was uh, further educating myself. I was working out. I was becoming more fit. I was doing everything and anything to craft myself that I can be more competitive. But I still felt like I wasn't good enough. And I thought, man, what the heck? What do I have to do? What's a guy got to do in order to get past this barrier of just being better at testing? Well, I left it alone and I came to terms with it. And I just started moving along with my life. And I thought, well, whatever. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I'll never forget I got an email completely out of the blue. I got an email from the RCMP recruiting saying, congratulations, we've looked at that list and you have been chosen to continue on in the process. And even then I was skeptical, you know, I wasn't this, oh, I got it, I got it, it's me. I wasn't that. I was in the position of, well, whatever, we'll see. And I remember I took the test or I took the next step and, and I submitted all of my, my stuff once again. And I just left it alone. And that's the, that's the advice that I've given to so many of you is that just do the step and then leave it alone. As hard as that is, I, I know, believe me, I've been there. Do the step and just kind of move on. And that's, that's what I submitted all of my stuff once again. And then it was, I don't know, some four, five months later, I get another email saying, thanks, we got it. Uh, now, you know, we're moving you on to the next. Now, back then there, there were still, you know, the, the uh, regular member interview and I had to prepare for all that stuff. I had to, you know, the vision and the hearing, all that was still the same. And I had to kind of progress through those things. I had to work my way to the polygraph and, and all of that stuff took about a year and a half. But the encouragement that I want to leave with you is that I didn't give up. And I want to encourage you today to say, don't give up on it, all right? It, okay, granted, it wasn't necessarily a fail, but it was a letter that's sort of saying you're not good enough right now. So you can either better yourself and take the test again and then try to improve your score or not. So my encouragement to you today, folks, is better yourselves in any way that you can because you are good enough. You do have something to offer. Now look, maybe policing just simply isn't in your future and you've got to come to terms with that. You've got to be okay with that. I know I did and it sucked because, listen, I, for those of you who don't know, I was a pastor for a dozen years before policing and I enjoyed what I did, but there's always that in the back of my mind. I thought, man, I've, what if? What if I can be, I see a cruiser or I hear sirens. What if, what if? And I just wasn't satisfied to live with a bunch of what ifs. I did not want to turn 65 years old and think back, man, what if I become a cop? What had, what, what would my life would have been like? So I'm glad I kept pressing on. I'm glad I kept working hard. So if there are any of you who think, well, Steve, you're just a golden boy. You've got everything thrown to you. No, quite the contrary. I've given up a lot of stuff in my life and I've, I've sacrificed and I've pressed on and I've overcome. And it's not because I'm anything special because believe me, if I was something special, I probably could have overcome a lot quicker, but I am not. I'm just a dude who wanted something bad enough. I'm a dude who thought I have something to offer a police service and I have something to offer a community more than the, more than the capacity that I was already doing it in. But even bigger than that, I thought this is something I've got to go after. And if I retire at 60, 65 years old and I look back and if I think I did not give it my all, I did not give everything that I am to pursue what I really wanted, then that is a failure. And I wasn't willing to fail on that end. I had to give it my all. And thankfully, thankfully, that perseverance paid off. So I got my badge. I carry it with me every single day. I look at it and I'm just so thankful that I am able to do the job that I wanted to do for so long. So in those dark days, and believe me, friends, if you are a police officer or you're becoming, you, you've either had them or you will have them. I promise you. And those dark days won't come from the things maybe that, that you think they will come from. They will sometimes come from the unassuming source, your friend or teammate, but you've got to keep pressing on. So take the lessons as you're moving through the application, take those and apply it every day that says, keep pressing on, keep improving yourself. Just because I have this, it doesn't mean I stop growing. Just because, uh, just because I've learned what it is to be a police officer and, and I can do my job, that doesn't mean that I stop here. No, because that's why I became a cop is because I wanted to keep growing. Listen, man, if a tree isn't growing, chances are it's dead. I want to be alive. I want to live life to its fullest. I want to live life with abundance. So if you're chasing this or any other thing in your life, keep pressing on. So friends, this is an encouragement video to you. If I can do it, believe me, you can do it too. And if policing isn't for you, let that settle, let that rest and go on to something else.
Because the truth is, it's not for everyone. And everyone isn't for it. Always, always be aware of your surroundings. Thanks for watching.